Teacher evaluation can be looked at in one of two ways. Either it can be viewed as a district's best, most systematic opportunity to influence the growth of teachers, or it can be viewed as a process that simply assesses a teacher's value to the organization. Truth be told, the process is probably a little of both. As district leaders, we have little to do with teacher evaluation, yet we have everything to do with teacher evaluation. Using an extremely conservative time estimate, an administrator 15 teachers under their direct supervision will spend over 60 hours of the school year on the evaluation process. When I talk to my principals and principals I work with in other districts, I consistently hear how time intensive the process is and how much stress and anxiety causes for our building leaders. Conversely, when teaching graduate courses, my discussion with future building leaders around the topic of evaluation have been fascinating. My last cohort reported zero students found the evaluation process meaningful. We have a major issue in our schools around the topic of evaluation that we seem to be systematically ignoring. We have outstanding rubrics to choose from, whether you prefer Marzano or Danielson. We have statutory guidance on how to implement a database segment of teacher evaluation. We spent time principles on the instrument and been mandated by the state to receive a minimum level of proficiency before we implement. We've spent countless hours in para meetings over the past several years. And the question for each of you and for each of us to answer is simple. Has that made any difference? Study after study shows that the single greatest determinant in the success of a school is the quality of its teachers. The quality of a school system cannot exceed the quality of its teachers. The question becomes singly, is our teacher system making a difference? Is your system helping take your teachers from their point A to their point B? My honest opinion after working with a multitude of districts and superintendents is that most of us simply cannot answer that question. You cannot answer those questions because we do not normally know what is taking place during this process. Think about it. We would all label ourselves instructional leaders, but during the one opportunity we have as an organization to systematically impact teacher growth, we're usually I have five suggestions that can help superintendents move from absent to profoundly present during the teacher evaluation process. While these suggestions do require some investment of time and resources, if our schedules and budget match our priorities, then this seems like a no-brainer. First, read your evaluations. I spent more than 90 hours reading every line of every evaluation conducted in my district over the past few years last holiday break. I learned more about my principals and our teachers than I learned in three years of day-to-day -day work. I found gaps in performance and perception, evaluation themes, and instances of wonderful practice and practices that made me cringe. This process helped me have much better conversations with my principals and help them grow exponentially. Number two, observe evaluations. I hope that each of us take the time to evaluate our principals. I encourage you to take the time to sit in on a pre-conference, observation, and post-conference. This process will help you coach your principal glimpse of life in the trenches and demonstrates to your teachers that you are not disconnected from their reality. Number three, leverage the pre-conference. There's not a single process in schools that I find is under leveraged as the pre-conference. Typical pre-conferences are a waste of time. Asking teachers to answer questions you already asked them to answer in writing or asking them to tell you what you will see is literally pointless. Continually asking what questions like what will I see as opposed to why and how questions, such as how did you decide to teach that way and why do you think that's the best pedagogical approach, will not help teachers grow. Number four, focus your principles. This concept is reinforced through PD provided by IASA's Rich Volts. If you are using this, the Danielson model, there is so much on it becomes hard to focus. Often the force cannot be seen through the trees. A strong focus on student engagement, 3C for those using Danielson, True engagement and critical thought, not simple compliance, will lead to significant growth. Becoming an expert in all 22 areas can be too much. Becoming a master of one is a much more palatable challenge. Number five, create a system. As a superintendent, you simply cannot do every teacher evaluation. That said, we do have a responsibility to lead us. Creating a system, providing PD, and having some type of principal accountability measure for this process is a requisite part of our job. It is the most systematic way we can influence principal growth so that they can influence teacher growth. Finally, in conclusion, let's not just talk a good game about being instructional leaders. Let's commit to it, let's invest our time, let's invest our resources, and truly make a difference in our schools.